Hello and welcome to my materials list. It's got basically the same as my last materials list, maybe with a few different colors. But uh, anyways, let's get started with this video. This one again is already started. This was my second Inktober drawing, so that means I had started it before my camera arrived in the mail. So it doesn't have, you don't get to see all of that cool background texture, but it's just texture. It's just blobs of color. And uh, I skip a couple of background bits coming up in the future here too, because uh, time mostly, mostly time. This video ended up being five hours worth of footage. So I had to speed it up pretty hard and cut some bits that weren't super important. I'm sure you guys can figure out how to make your own cool backgrounds. But I'm starting with the hair here. And I did probably way too much of this hair with a fan brush. I was very excited to have a fan brush. It was the first time that I'd ever bought one or used one. I'd never had access to a fan brush before. So I was excited. I was excited and I used it for practically all of this hair, but it wasn't really necessary. Fan brushes are great to get little details in, but I could have done a lot more of the hair with just a regular round brush. That's not even a watercolor brush, it's just a regular, regular paintbrush. It did, I will say that building up all of the layers with the fan brush created a really interesting texture effect with the hair. So maybe, maybe it wasn't all bad. Maybe it wasn't too bad. But the trick to hair I've found is to start extra, extra slow and just fill in places where you know you want it to be dark first and to build up the rest of it in clumps. And by clumps, I mean just sections. Hopefully you're using some sort of reference photo. If you're making up a character and you're drawing their hair, I would still look at a photo of hair just because it makes it a lot easier to observe how hair naturally falls and shifts and how it reflects light. Observation is one of the most important things to learn as an artist. But it's one of my favorite things too because once you start looking at things as a as a combination of light and shadow more than a solid object, you start seeing seeing the world in, in a whole new way. And I think that's very valuable. Very valuable to change your perspective every once in a while as an artist. This hair took a long time. But hair, hair can be complicated, but you just go for it and it, it can turn out fun. Oh, there's my skin tones. I was actually very happy with these skin tones. I wasn't sure how well blending out skin tones would work in my India inks because I'd never, I'd never tried to mix skin tones with India inks, obviously, before. But it turned out well. I mixed two different shades. One, I believe, is a mix of nut brown, white, to dilute that brown a little bit. And, uh, oh, excuse me. Hold on, I'm going to get a drink here. Mm. Ah, tasty. But anyways, the lighter skin tone, I think, was a mix of brown, white, and red. And... The darker shadow tone was a mix of brown, white, and a little bit of blue. There were probably a little bits of red and little bits of blue mixed in with both of the different colors, but in far fewer amounts for the warm color than, than for the cool color. I don't know what I was doing with my phone there. This paper is still my mixed media paper. I have this one and then one more drawing on uh, painting, I guess, on the mixed media paper. So it is very wrinkly, very wrinkly. It, it creates an extra challenge, I think, to paint something when your paper is all wrinkly because you can't let that pigment settle in the troughs of your wrinkles. But thankfully, after the next painting, which is an angler fish, if you guys like cool undersea animals. The next one is going to be an angler fish. And then after that, I will move on to my 
hot press watercolor paper and it'll be far less wrinkly. But that's all right, it is a special, special challenge. But that skin tone, I don't know. I do really like the colors and how that turned out. And now I'm just layering on, I started out with a light warm wash around the edges of my figure. I left that top section with the shoulders almost completely white for, for quite a long time because that was my most highlighted area. It needed to stay the lightest. And now I'm filling in these tiny peaks, tiny peaks of skin through my, through my hair here. You can see part of my nose and part of my chin Doing tiny bits of a face through hair, the most important thing to remember is to get your proportions correct. Sometimes it's easier to draw out the whole face and then cover it with hair just to make sure that the bits peeking through aren't a little offset or, or placed wrongly. There's even a tiny bit of ear poking through my hair there in the middle that you can't quite see from this angle. I wish my hair was really this blue all the time. I never bleach my hair, it's just kind of a blondish color normally. So I dye it blue, and it looks blue for a while, but boy does it fade into an aqua-y green relatively quickly, but that's okay. The blue-green spectrum is my favorite color. Getting in some more hair there. Just always, always start where it looks the darkest and then slowly work your way into those lighter areas with your hair colors. Piece by piece is really the way to go. Try and find a clump of hair and focus on that as a separate shape before you move on to another piece. I found is the easiest way to go about it. Of course, there's going to be some darker under layers here where the hair splits on the top level and, and peeks through into the bottom of the hair and that's where you get the most shadows. Those shadows are really going to bring out the highlights later on, later on in the piece. There's my fan brush again. I did, I did love using that fan brush for the first couple of times. I've got a, no, I actually forgot to videotape a drawing I did of a husky that I did almost entirely with that fan brush. And he looks a little spiky, but he was a very pretty, he was a very pretty dog. You can get a little spiky with the fan brush. Oh, this was one of my favorite little details here in the hand. A cool picture, I, I think, is very dependent on cool little details and how, how that strikes you. And this was my favorite little detail, was this swatch of, swatch of hair down here. Oh, but I'm just doing the hand right now. I suppose that hair is a little later. See how much darker that indie ink looks after it dries? That's one of the reasons why it's so important to do small layers and then let it dry and then add more darker layers on top of it because you never know how, how dark that's gonna dry. Plus it's just easier. It's easier to add another layer on top of a dry layer. Especially with India inks because that color is going nowhere once it's dried. A lot of blue in this one. I was really, I was working on something with that blue triangle, but I think I ended up mostly covering up by the time the end of the picture arrives because I didn't quite like how it was looking. That's another thing that you can always change things. With India ink, it's particularly difficult to change things because they're permanent and they're translucent, so you add more layers on it and you'll still see the layers beneath, which is awesome for a, a lot of different applications like this the skin wash that I'm doing but it also means that it's a little harder to correct things that you maybe didn't quite like about the first layer just yet another good reason to start very very light so if you make any mistakes it's easier to cover them up I did not I went all in with this blue triangle and I think I managed to save it in the end but for a long time I didn't like it at all 
but you keep working. I mean, you gotta keep working at it. I think almost everybody dislikes a drawing. Almost every artist dislikes a drawing at some point in the process of creating it. Because at some point it has a really awkward stage, you know? Just an awkward, funny looking stage. And too many people, I think, give up at that stage. They stop and say it's a crummy drawing, but if you keep working at it and making little changes and fiddling with it until it's closer to what you want it to be, then, then it's much easier to be happy with it. So don't, just don't give up, keep, keep drawing. Added in a little shadow underneath the hair there, right along the back of the neck, where that hair would block the sun from the skin. Still have a very white shoulder area. You notice how I'm putting dark on either side, the top and the bottom of a section, and leaving the middle part much paler because that's where my highlight's gonna be. And you wanna leave that value contrast in hair, that's how you get it to look shiny. If you don't have enough light spots in your hair, it won't show as a reflection and your hair will look dull. So I suppose if you wanna paint dull hair, then you know, don't, don't use so many highlights. But I wanted my hair to look nice and shiny, so I left in those highlights and even added some more. This was another experiment on how far you could get with, in, with white India ink. And the answer is that you can create some really lovely translucent white highlights with India ink, but it will not cover anything. That is the limit of India. It won't, it won't cover anything up. You'll be able to see through it still which was fine for this. That's why I left those areas paler. And there I'm adding some more shadows around the edges. Now normally I would use these skin tones just over and over again in layers to create more shadows, but I think toward the end I did end up using some Payne's Gray to create some shadows on, on the skin, which normally is not a great idea because it looks a little dingy which is what I was going for for this for this piece so it it worked in my favor in this particular instance there I am finally filling in that white highlight but even though I've put I've toned the the paper down with a thin layer of my skin colored India ink it's still a very bright spot, and that's because I, I waited so long to cover it with anything. I left it white for so long. So that white paper shows through the India ink. Those are the best highlights. Even if you have a highlight, like a subtle highlight in skin that isn't completely white, then the India ink is very useful because you can put such a thin translucent layer over a mostly white area and get a toned down highlight that looks more realistic. Ah, I switched, switched angles here. Must be a different filming session. Oh yeah, it's nighttime now. You see my nice yellow lamp. I have a lovely yellow lamp that alters the color composition of every video I do in the nighttime. But sometimes that's how it goes. You can't always film in ideal light conditions. I suppose you could if you had like a studio maybe, but I, I do not, so here we are. There's that black I was telling you about. Add just a little bit of black for your high contrast areas, your deepest, deepest dark areas. And I added just that tiny little, tiny little touch of black at the bottom, sort of to make it seem like my dingy textured background is, is creeping, creeping up there at the bottom. And there's where those highlights really start to pop. Because if you want your highlights to pop really nicely, you have to add a particularly dark tone next to it to contrast the highlight. That's how you get them to really shine. Now I'm just adding little, little color adjustments, it looks, here and there. Just outlining a few places. Here's my chin. 
Here's where I added maybe a bit too much black. I enjoyed how it looked, you know, just a minute ago, but, oh, see, and I like that. I like that part right there. It makes the shoulder curve in better. It was a hit and miss. It was a hit and miss, this first um, skin color attempt that I did with India ink. It was a good learning experience, certainly. And I really like how the hand turned out. You'll see here in a minute, I'll start working on that actual skull cap I'm holding there, but, but the hand itself, I feel turned out very well. A little more abstract than some other hands that I've done, but I think that added to it in a strange way. So I think I'll work on that more. You know, the illusion of detail, the illusion of detail rather than the exact depiction of detail. Oh, I'm finally adding the cool hair bit. I swear, this is one of my favorite parts. And I did all of that hand first before I put the hair in because I wanted you to be able to see the shape and the tone of the hand underneath the hair. I don't know about you guys, but my hair is pretty thin. I can still like see stuff through it if it's just a little piece like what would be on that, that little scalp bit there. So I wanted you to I wanted you to see that that depth of the hand receding underneath the skull as I you know, through the hair still, and that's another area that India ink does really shine in pretty well. I love the translucent quality of it. It gives it gives a lot of things a softness while maintaining a real sense of vibrancy, because India inks are vibrant, especially vibrant. Oh, look at that wonky, wonky paper. It's weird, but just watching this, I can't wait until it's done and dried off so that it doesn't look so wrinkly anymore. Here's a little bit of background I did for you guys to see, but it's just adding a little bit of darkness, a little bit of darkness to really contrast the pale skin but I didn't add I didn't add my darkness all over. I sort of that's how it's one of the ways I created this texture is just making these weird wobbly shapes with my water and then and then dripping black ink into it over this red. Because originally this was a nice solid red that I just uh, kept adding adding little splotches of black into at varying varying transparencies and you can alter the transparency or the opacity of of india ink just as easily as you can with watercolor by adding by adding a little water to it and you can get it very very thinned out you can add incredibly thin washes of color which is another thing I really appreciate. You just have to wash, you have to watch out with the, with your washes of color that the edges don't dry because the India ink, you can't re-wet and, and spread that color out anymore. That hard edge where your wash dried is, is there forever. There we go, jumped out of that background, but I cut most of the background pieces for, for time, but you got to see that, that teeny tiny bit, I suppose. Now I'm just adding in a little bit of tone. I wanted to work on, on the tone of, of my skin here a little bit. So I just kept adding, kept adding gray to that. A little bit more white ink. The white ink really does subtly, subtly bring out highlights. See them the tips of my hair there at the very back? That's a nice, subtle highlight. I like that a lot. And I managed to cover up that triangle that I didn't particularly like a little bit better. Hooray! What do I got there? More blue? I will bet it's more blue, because it's, it's blue a lot for this one. Mix in some colors. That's my little eyedropper I keep on hand. It's just a empty bottle with a little dropper feature I use to 
get ink out of all of my little Windsor and Newton ink containers. That's one thing that I don't particularly like about the Windsor and Newton inks is that they don't come with a dropper. And I really like being able to drop my inks very carefully into my pans. And so I had to, I had to find my own little eyedropper, which, which wasn't a huge hassle or anything, but some inks do come with, with the dropper and, and I do prefer that. Now I'm just trying to add some depth to the base of my hair, where you would see the thickness of my hair if you were looking at it from behind and a little below me. <laughs> the thickness, whatever thickness there is for my poor hair. Adding in a little more contrast here at the top. I'm getting to be about done with the main bulk of this piece. Oh no. I just I just noticed right now that there's no hair on that on that skull piece right there. I guess I must have switched some clips around. Deary, deary, dear. That's all right. I do that a lot. It's like a jigsaw puzzle putting these pieces of clips together sometimes, but you get the idea, I'm sure. I'm definitely almost done with that skin though. Those wrinkles, <laughs> the, for the skin in particular, in particular, was was terrible to deal with with the wrinkly paper because transitions of skin tone are so generally subtle that it's hard to compensate for these troughs you get in your wrinkly paper. So definitely, if you want to use India ink or watercolor for um, people or skin tones, I would certainly use, use watercolor paper. It's much easier. Now you see the beginning of my scalp hair. <laughs> I, wonder how I, I wonder how I flipped that around. Hmm, did we see this already? I think I might have to cut this out. I might have accidentally put a repeat bit in there. See, that's, that's the best way to use a fan brush though, is you put a little bit of ink. You put a little bit of ink where you want it to be. See, for the hair particularly, I had a puddle of water, a little bit of water, shaped like the piece of hair that I wanted. And then at the very top, where it would be darkest, I put my ink in little drops and then I drug it down with the fan brush just drug it down into that puddle of water and that created a really soft texture to that piece of hair so I guess that was a worthwhile repeat anyway because got some fan brush in info into there I think I spent way too much time fiddling with the background to get it exactly how I wanted it. But, I mean, it did end up how I wanted it, so I suppose it wasn't wasted time after all. Now I'm just adding a couple of little highlights where the light would hit that hair. At the very, very top where it connects to the skull, there's a couple of little highlights, and then where it bends in toward the hand, it's darker because that would be shaded out of the light. And then as the hair folds back to a more horizontal position as it rests across my palm, then it picks up the light again. And that's where you want your reflection. Sorry, you can't see a lot. I'm holding, I'm holding my little tray like exactly in the way right there. I used this tray, it was actually a pan that a bunch of tubes of acrylic paint I have came in. And I'm using it as a little palette for my India inks because I was quite concerned that the India ink is permanent once it dries. And uh, oh, there's a little, a little smudge right there. It's okay, it came right off. But I was concerned about how permanent India ink was purportedly before I started using it. So I wanted to use this nice disposable little tray I had in case it got completely, completely messed up. I didn't want to use my watercolor, my watercolor tray and, and get it all messed up. 
which I think was a good decision because by the end of the month using this little ink tray it had gotten pretty banged up pretty pretty banged up so I think that was a good decision see just still adding little bits of dark I can't stop I can't stop with my little dark bits I think I ended up making my back a little too rounded a little too rounded or maybe that's just the angle but like looking at it from right here, I would say that I'm a little off with the way the shadow wraps around that right shoulder specifically. The left shoulder I like. It's got a nice light glow from it. That's where my light source is coming from over toward the left, my theoretical light source. There's not a light source actually in this painting, but it's, it's, it's important to imagine a light source and, and paint your picture to reflect that. That's how you get more realistic looking shadows. Ooh, it's a close-up. It must be. It must be time for these little bits of skull matter, man. This is the fun part right here. Look at those fingers. Look at my fingertips. Don't they look good? Ah, I love that hand. Be amazed how hard it was to find a picture of a brain bisected at a more horizontal angle like I'm portraying here you find a lot of pictures I mean I guess generally you don't look up bisected brain pictures unless you're a neurologist or I suppose just interested in the brain but most of them you find are bisected what vertically down the middle but uh that's not what I was going for here so I had to look around and <laughs> dig out a few old college textbooks but I found a nice a nice representation enough to get the gist anyways because that's what you need in in a picture like this you need the gist of a brain ah so many people probably have the gist of a brain but that's okay now here's the second part the first part I actually accidentally painted as if it were bisected vertically and I had to go back and, and redo it once I thought about it a little longer. It was my favorite part of this brain thing was the little red edges. They had a very nice dark red edge that really gave a lot of depth to the brain matter. Looked made it look a little more three-dimensional. Oh, we got all blurry. Was it my video is recently getting blurry right toward the end? It's that autofocus. I don't think I use autofocus anymore. I think I just focus it before I go and then go from there. These little dark bits. You'd think a brain is just a light pink, but you need those little dark bits in there to uh, boost the contrast so that it looks more like it's coming out of the page at you. You see the little little bits of skin tone and bone around the edge? That's another good little detail to have in there. Just little details really make a piece, I find. But that's just me, I love, I love little details. Maybe too much. I sit here doing this little brain details for maybe too long. Be careful using your finger to um, smudge things or to blot things off your page. I have quite a few times, <laughs> quite a few times, I have attempted to gently blot something off of a piece of paper only to find that my finger had already had a bunch of paint on it. And I had now smeared a completely new color where I exactly did not need it. And I've done that quite a few times, so... Be careful. Use your fingers because that's what they're for, but be careful about it. I wonder if this paper ever actually de-wrinkled. I have to look at it again. If it completely de-wrinkled while it was dry because that one is that one is specifically very wrinkled. I think it's because I I had so many s water puddles on that background. I had so many overlapping bits of 
Probably too much water, looking back. Probably too much water for the paper. Look at that, doesn't that look cool? And now we're gonna end it out with uh, this nice still image. Got a nice still picture here, doesn't it look good? I think it, I think it flattened out all right. Got the tape taken off. Got a good angle on it. Yeah, I really like how, I really like how the hair turned out and the hand. Like that little swoosh of hair coming down the palm is still is still my favorite part of the whole piece. And there you have it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked my video, be sure to subscribe or like or hit the little notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. And thank you very much for joining me. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye.